Geelong were absolutely outstanding, but the Bombers were really, really poor. I thought it was a bruise-free game of football. You don't like saying that about any side, but that's what the Bombers have to cop after yesterday. I'll take a look at some stats from the Essendon Footy Club yesterday and how dominant Geelong were in this game. You can see there, obviously, contested possessions. They were smashed clearances. They were smashed uh, centre clearance, they were also smashed, yet they had more disposal. So to me, they got their game wrong yesterday. A lot of you know, short little passes to blokes with beefing up their disposals, but weren't really effective at all. I want to show some vision which I'd be embarrassed about if I was a senior player at Essendon. This is Zach Merritt early in the game. How hard did he want to chase when the score is 7-0? to zero? Jeremy Cameron kicks the ball, gets it back. Did Zach really want to dig in for his side early in the game? I wouldn't have thought he did. This one, the captain, Dyson Heppel, still the score 7-1. to one. Heppel's down here with Patrick Dangerfield. The only excuse I could give Dyson is, did he think the whistle had blown and the game was going to stop? Pretty poor there from another leader of the football club. And suddenly the game's getting away from a confidence perspective. This is a centre bounce. You've got Caldwell and Zach Merritt. You've always got to have your sweeper. You've always got to have someone behind the ball. Where's Caldwell going there? Straight through the middle of the game. 13 to 1 soon becomes 19 to 1, where they're not even laying a glove on Geelong, who I'll keep saying we're outstanding. Another one, stoppage straight out the back. This is what the dogs got wrong on grand final day against Melbourne. Essendon made all the same mistakes yesterday. And the last one, we all know what Cameron and Hawkins do. Parrish is here. Is he hoping for the footy or is he trying to defend here? Maybe he was chasing a kick as well. And Cameron goes and kicks a goal. So start from Lordo. Anyway, I hope Ben Rutten's a strong during the week because that's that as he said, that's just not good enough. Good Lord. Well, if you, if you say that you were embarrassed, yeah. that's a sad indictment on those current players yeah. and that. Jump. And I said Bruce Free. That there was a nice. Ooh. They looked to play a nice game of yeah. footy yes, against the t- side that uh, has been there all the time yeah. in Geelong, and uh, they just bullied them yesterday. Had some unavailability issues, and and they did though come off a uh, finals appearance last year. But that performance, Lord, to your point, did shock Ben Rutten. Yeah, it wasn't an indication of what we've been doing throughout pre-season, how we've been training. It was just a long way off, anywhere near our best footy. And it was kind of across the board. You know, I think it's, yeah, something that probably didn't really see it coming. It's so far from what we've kind of been doing throughout our training and it's certainly not what we stand for as a, as a footy club. But it's round one and it's a long way off our best and what we've been doing. It's a big statement to make after one showing of the new season. It's not what we stand for. The problems with the injury uh, were compounded when Cole Langford went down very early in the match with a, a hamstring, which is, is going to keep him out for, I would imagine, a minimum of three weeks, quite possibly more. There could be further concerns. Um, one of their emerging players in uh, Sam Draper did this to Asaba Radigalia, and I'd be surprised if that doesn't result in a week's unavailability for him when the match review office determines that uh, particular incident today. And then we get to this incident where Jeremy Cameron is collected by Laverdo there as Tom Hawkins takes the mark. Uh, major concerns there. There's a hip issue with Jeremy Cameron. He was taken to a hospital when there were internal issues, issues that he's experiencing. What I can tell you, TJ, this morning is that he, he did leave hospital last night and most importantly, scans have cleared him of any problem internally. So they're now dealing with the, the hip pointer injury and they're going to work on him with the hope of getting him up for uh, the Friday night game against the, the Swans mm. in round two. But just to clarify, that, that's not a match review issue is it that's that's an injury there was nothing yeah. there was nothing, nothing in that no, no, no but exactly. the draper is yeah. run. that will be I, I would imagine